Okay. So uh, thank you all. Thank you for joining today's session. So let's have a quick recap what we have discussed in the last session. In the last session, we have just given introduction about me, about yourself, guy, you, you guys. And then we have discussed about what is DevOps and what other things we are going to learn in this training. And if you're going to join this particular course, what other things you will get from our side? This is what we have discussed in the last session. In today's session, we are going to learn about how we can create a Azure account. That's the first thing we are going to learn. And then if time permits, we are going to learn how to create a Linux virtual machine. But before starting off this particular topic, any question anyone have, please raise your hand. Anyone have any question? Okay. Look, like no one has any question. So let's just start with the today's topic where we are going to learn about how to create an Azure account. To create your Azure account, you can use any of your personal email address. Don't use your official email address to create your Azure account. You can use any of your personal email address to create your Azure account. It can be Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, Hotmail, any of your email you can use here. And to create your Azure account, you can go to this particular URL, which is mentioned in the PPT. You can go to this particular URL and then you have to click on start free. Once you click on start free, you will move to the next page, which is the login page of Azure, but you don't have account. So definitely you can't log in it. You have to create an account. So click on create one. Once you click on create one, <coughs> sorry, you have to create, you have to enter your email address. Once you enter your email address, you have to click on next once you click on next you will need to enter the password whatever the password you want to set for your azure account that particular password you have to give here and it can be any of the password you can give here there is no specific limit that you have to give uh, minimum uh, minimum is minimum eight you have to give it but there is no specific you have that you have to use number characters alpha, add the alphanumeric characters no it's up to you, whatever you want to use, you can use, but your minimum password needs to be eight characters long. And once you enter your password, you have to click on next. Once you click on next, you will get one OTP. You will get one code on your email address to verify your email address. So whatever the code you will get from their side on your email, that particular code you have to enter here. And then click on next. So with the help of this one, we are going to verify our email address. So the email which we have given, that is correct. Now, once you click on next, here you have to give your personal details your first name, your middle name. If you have a middle name, you can give middle name or last name. And you don't need to enter the email address. Email address, they'll automatically pick from the previous. Step. And then you have to enter your mobile number, your phone number. And you have to just only enter the number. Don't enter the country code. Here, why we were entering the phone number? Because now here we have to verify our phone number. In previous step, we are verifying our email address. In this step, we are going to verify our 
phone number. And to verify the phone number, there are two options. One is by using text message. Other one is by using call. So what they are doing or by using text message or call, they'll give you one OTP. By using text message, you'll get an OTP or by call, you will get an OTP. That particular OTP you have to enter here to verify your phone number. Once you verify the phone number, you have to enter your address here. Now, which address you have to enter here? It can be any address you can enter. No. You have to make sure that you have to enter the address which is mentioned in your bank account. Why you have to enter the same address which is mentioned in your bank account? Because to create your Azure account, you have to give your card details. You have to give your card details. It can be debit card or it can be credit card you can give here. So once you give your card details, you have to give it. But before giving your card details, you have to enter the address here. And address needs to be exact same, which is mentioned in your bank account. Now let's take example here. Normally, whenever you're giving your address, you are giving like this, like flat number four. But in bank, they have mentioned as flat four. Which one is correct for us? For us, this one is correct. But for Azure, this one is incorrect. For Azure, this one is correct because this is the address which is mentioned in your bank account. So whatever is mentioned in your bank account, that same address you have to mention here. It's in line one, line two, line three. You have to give, then you have to give your city, state, and then postal code. Postal code is also called as zip code or PIN code, you have to give here. And then check these checkboxes if you want to read their terms and conditions. It's up to you, you can read that also. And then click on next. Now once you click on next, here you have to give your card details. Now, Azure is not supporting Rupee card. If anyone from you from India, if you have a Rupee card, it is not supporting Rupee card, support Visa and MasterCards. So you have to give your card holder name, card number, expiry date, and CVV you have to give here. Now, once you give your CVV, they are going to deduct two rupees. If you're from India, they are going to deduct two rupees or they are, if you're from other country, they are going to deduct $1 from your account. Now it doesn't mean that they'll deduct that particular amount. Yes, they're deducted, but that particular amount you will get refund in three to five days from their side just to validate your card details they are going to deduct that particular amount from your card and after that three to, within three to five days you will get that particular amount get refunded in your account and once your account is ready you can log in it your account this is how your account will look like but whenever we are creating our account from day one they are they going to start charging us no they will not start charging you from day one what you will get if you are creating a new account do we get something free quota from their side so we can use those free things yes we are getting some free quota from their side 
what you will get is whenever you are going to create your account from the day one you will get 200 us dollar credit in your account 200 us dollar credit you will get for first 30 days for first 30 days you will get the 200 US dollar credit. It means for first 30 days, you can use any of the service. Even it's a paid service also you are going to use. You don't need to pay anything till that time you are under that particular credit. If you are under that particular credit, for first 30 days, you don't need to pay any single rupee. Now, once you are completed 30 days then you have to upgrade your subscription to pay as you go in pay as you go what you will get is you will get 12 months free it means after 30 days you will get 12 months free in 12 months free there are few services that are list of services if you are using those list of services then you don't need to pay any single thing if you are using those services which are mentioned under their list for 12 months free then you don't need to pay anything now it doesn't mean that for under 12 months it's completely unlimited free no in 12 months also there's a limitation they have given to us if you are using under that particular limitation then you don't need to pay anything if you are going to exceed that limit then you have to pay to them And there are few services which are always free. Under your 12 months also it is free. Even after 12 months also those are free. And those services are free for all. Not just for our training purpose. Even in our clients also have those services free. Now. Where is the list of 12 months free services are always free? Here I have given it. Now here we can see all those services which are coming under 12 months free or always free. So scroll down. See here. $200 credit you are getting for 30 days. And after that, there are a few services which are free after 30 days also so here is the list of services we can see see all free services so there are a few such service called advisor we have in azure which is unlimited free for always so 12 months free 12 months free always free we are getting here and how much limit we are getting in always free this is what they have mentioned here always free this is azure devops service we have five users with unlimited private git repository it is free so till five users it is free if you are going to add more than five users then they are going to charge you so we have a kubernetes service always free so for cluster management it is free under the cluster management if you are going to create nodes, then it is chargeable. So this is the Kubernetes service. So we have Azure file services, 12 months free, 100 GB of data is free. So here we can see all the details, how much, for how many months we are getting free and how much free we are getting, we can see here. We have all the services details here. But if I want to check how much limit I have used or how much limit is left, is there any option we can check that? Yes, we have that option also. That we'll discuss in our upcoming sessions. Not here. For that one, definitely we have to log into our Azure account. Once we log into our Azure account, then we can see how much free quota we have left. Those things we'll discuss in our upcoming session. So this link is given in PPT. After this session, I'm going to upload this PPT 
this link is very important for us. For you guys, this link is important. You have to make sure once you get this link, bookmark this link. So this is how you can create your Azure account. And once you create your Azure account, you will get a free subscription for their site for first 30 days. Now, any question anyone have related to account creation, please let me know. Anyone have any question? Yes, Sumanth, you can unmute. Yeah, hello, sir. Good morning. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity. So my question over here is like, is it particularly for any particular operating system, these services is available for 12 months or how it will be? Oh, whatever. It's not specific to any operating system, Subant. It okay. is not specific. Whatever the service which they have mentioned it, that this particular service is free for this much of limit, you have it. You are. It's not depend on your operating system, whatever the operating system you are use, using it. You are using Mac, Windows, it doesn't make, they, they are using, you are using by using browser, their services. So it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. Anyone have any more question? Yes, now you can mute. Abdul. Hi, yeah. This is look like same like uh, one not four registration, right? Uh, means in for also same thing we have to do. Even for this also same thing, right? Nothing different. No, your account is same. You are we are going to practice Azure admin, or you are going to practice Azure DevOps. Azure account is same for all. Okay, okay, okay. I thought the creation the... process is same. Okay. You want to practice any of the Azure service. Account creation process is same. You are getting the same subscription in there also because you are going to create Azure account. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyone have any more question or we can start our first AWS service called virtual machine. Okay, no questions. Let's start with our someone has question. Yes, Nehal. Hello. Yes, Nehal. Is there needed to go as a pay as you go? Sorry? Is there needed to pay as you go? You don't need to go for pay as you go. You are getting a free quota for 30 days, and after 30 days, you are getting 12 months free quota. Okay. You don't need to go for pay as you go right now. No, after the 30 days, uh, it's 45 days course. So that's why not. After, after 30 days, you are getting 12 months free quota, Snehal. Okay. So first 30 days, you have that credit. After 30 days, you have free quota of 12 months again. Okay. Okay? Okay. It's up to you. you if you don't want to create account right now, you can create your account after a few days also. It's up to you. And it doesn't mean that 45 days of course is going to complete 45 days. And after 45, you don't want to practice. You have to practice after 45 days also. Mm -hmm. Because you can't pra complete your practice within 45 days. You have to practice after that also. Okay? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so now we are going to learn about our first service called virtual machine. But before starting all this particular service virtual machine, we have to understand one thing called as resource group. Now, what is resource group? Resource group is a like a folder. If I talk about in general language, resource group is like a folder for us is like a container where we are going to store all the Azure resources, whichever we want to store in our resource group. Whatever the resources we want to store, we want, want to create in Azure. So the first thing what we need is we need a resource group. I can say in, in general language is like a folder where I can store all the Azure services. So to create all the Azure services, the first thing what we need is resource group. So resource group is very important in Azure because without resource group, we are not able to create our services. So now, can I give any name to this resource group? Yes, you can give any name to the resource group. And resources are only going to exist in our resource group. So if I want to create a Kubernetes service, I want to create a Docker service, I want to create a virtual machine, all these services are going to store in our resource group. Without resource group, I can't create Kubernetes service, I can't create virtual machine, I can't create Docker service without resource group. And once we create the resource group, we can't change the name of our resource group. It is impossible to change the name of our resource group. Groups can have resources of many different types. Now, what is this different type? Types means services. In one single resource group, I can store, I can create database also. I can store virtual machine also. I can store storage services also. I can store Kubernetes service also. I can store Docker service also. So in one single resource group, we can store all the services. Means resource group I can say is one centralized location. Whatever the resources we have created, whatever the services we have created, all those services we can see at one single created services. Whichever we have already created, we can see at one single place in our resource group. Groups can have resources from many different regions. Now, what's the meaning of this one? It's a very important interview question also. Now, when I'm creating a resource group, I need to select one region. Region means a data center. In which data center of Azure, I want to create the resource group. I can select that. But once our resource group is ready, I want to create a resource, like I want to create a virtual machine in any other region. Is it possible we can do that? Yes, it is possible. Practically, it is possible. But we are not doing these things. We are not creating a resource group in any other region and resource in any other region. Why? Because if you are going to do this thing, it is going to impact our performance. It is going to impact our performance and performance is very important in organizations. No one, no client wants to compromise with the performance and their security. So make sure the resource which we are going to create, we have the resource group in the same region also. So now we need to create a resource group. Without resource group, I can't create virtual machine. So how we can create a resource group? Search, you can see here in my account, here I can see a resource group because I have recently used. That's why it is showing here. But might be in your account, it is not showing here. It will show here in Nav Navigate. Here it will show because this is this these four options are default options. 
so you can see here or you can search in the search box here i'm getting resource groups click on create and resource group is completely free of cost for lifetime always free there is no charges to create a resource group. So click on create. And we have to give the name. And name can be anything. I can give your name also to the resource group. The only thing is your resource group name needs to be unique in your Azure account. In your Azure account, resource group name needs to be unique. Other than that, you, whatever the name I am using it, you all can use the same name. So I'm giving us batch 374. This batch hyphen 374. Click on create. Now, the first thing is subscription. Subscription is very important. And then resource group. In which region I'm going to create the resource group? Here I'm getting regions. These are their data centers. Whatever the data centers they have it, the name of the data center, we are able to see here. If you want to search, you can search also. Here I can search India. See where it's IN, I'm getting it. So I'm selecting Central India. Then Review Plus Create. Validation part. So whenever we are creating a resource in Azure, they are validating our details. Once they validated, we are getting a validation pass. And till that time we are not getting the validation pass, this create button is disabled. But right now it is enabled. Click on create. Done. We are able to create our resource group. So refresh. Here I am. And even we got the notification also here. So our resource group is ready. I can open this resource group. Click on the resource group name. Here I can see the list of resources, whichever we are going to keep under this resource. But right now it is not showing anything because we didn't create any resource. Now we are going to create a resource now which resource we are going to create create virtual machine and whenever we are creating a linux virtual machine to connect our linux virtual machine there are two ways we have it one way we have it is the password option second way we have it is the ssh key option but right now we are going to learn about password option. This one we are going to learn. In our upcoming session, we are going to learn about SSH key options. So let's learn about how to create a Linux machine with the help of password. So go to virtual machines. Click on create virtual machine. Now, here we are only going to discuss about those points which are mandatory. And wherever star mark is there, only those are the mandatory. So first of all, we have to select a resource group. Our resource group is already ready. We have selected the resource group. Now give the name. Name can be any name. VM374. Scroll down. Now, first thing we have selected our resource group. Second thing, we have given the name to our virtual machine. Third, region. The central India. Region means in which data center 
I want to create this virtual machine. Central India. Next. Next is I want to select the image. Now what is image here? In our general language, we call it as operating system. But in Azure, it is not called as operating system. In Azure, it is called as image. Which image? Here I'm getting the list of images. These are the two recently I have used. So it is showing me in the top. And these are the recommended one, means these are very commonly used images. That's what we are able to see here. Other than that, if you want to see other images, we have a button called see all images so with the help of see all images you can see all the images whichever is providing by the azure tool it is it's not supporting all operating system it's supporting only few operating system windows definitely they are supporting ubuntu sushi red hat debian they are using these oracle linux also it is supporting it so only few limited images they are providing to us. And one of is very common operating system is Ubuntu. They are providing that one. And latest version is 24 version. We are getting the 24 version also there. So the first thing we have selected is image. Now. I'm going to enable the chat box. I have a one question. You can send your answers in chat box. Let's say example, one person wants to buy a laptop or desktop. Is, is not much technical person. Think about a normal person. He wants to buy one computer. What are the basic thing of when a person is going to check? Whenever he's going to buy a computer or laptop, he's going to check. Correct. CPU. RAM, hard disk, and one more thing. Very important. Without that, you can buy any any brand, any anything that will not work. Your hard disk, CPU, RAM will not work without that particular thing. Correct operating system. This is the basic thing everyone is taking. These four things operating system, hard disk, RAM, CPU. Even a person don't know about processor, what is processor? He is, everyone don't know about those things. But these basic things everyone is taking. That how much CPU, how much speed I'm getting it means how, how much space I'm having it, RAM and OS, these basic things. Everyone is checking whenever a person is buying a computer. Now, which operating system we are using it? Linux that we have already selected. Now I want to select CPU and RAM. Can I select separately CPU and RAM? No, that's not possible. In Azure cloud, they are coming in one single package, I can say. I have to select CPU and RAM together. Now, right now, my requirement is very basic requirement. I don't want to go with some big requirement. My requirement is one CPU and one GB of the RAM. Not much requirement. Definitely in organization, they have a big requirement based on client requirement. We have to select that CPU and RAM. But right now, I don't have big requirement. Only one CPU and one GB of RAM I have to select. So you can see here by default, they have given me one size right now, which is standard B1S, one CPU and one GB of RAM. If I want more, four CPU, 16 GB of RAM, I can select this size. If I want to select more than this, I can go to all sizes. We are getting some more. Big series we are getting it. There you will get more. 8 CPU, 64 GB of RAM. So depend on requirement to requirement. We can say I have even 
one CPU, zero point five GB of RAM also. I have two CPU, eight GB of RAM. One CPU, three point five GB of RAM also we have. So depend on our requirement to requirement client requirement, we have to select that particular size of CPU and RAM. But which one you guys are going to select? So you will not get any bill. Yeah, for first 30 days, you can select anything. You will not get any bill. But but what about after 30 days? Let's see that. Where I can see those details, the link which I have shown you a few minutes before in PDF number two, in last page of this PDF, here we have that free trial subscription. Let's open this link again. See all free services, scroll down, scroll to last. Here I'm getting virtual machine, Linux. You are getting 750 hours per month free. 750 hours per month free you are getting it. And for 12 months. So it means once you complete your 30 days, after 30 days, you will have 750 hours per month free for 12 months. And these are the size you are going to use. B1S, B2 PTS, B2 ATS, V2. If you are going to use these sizes, then you will not get any bill. Which size I am using right now? B1S. Standard B1S size I am using. So it means... If my, my account is not coming under free tier, it's not under that. But if your account is coming under free tier and if you are using B1S, you will not get any bill. And if 750 hours are sufficient, let's calculate that also. In one single day, we have 24 hours. And let's example, this is 30th of month, 30 days we have. If I calculate 20 multi-four multiply by 30, how many hours it is going to be? 720. How many hours we are getting it? 750. So it means if you are going to create one machine and keep that particular machine for 24 by 7, you will not get any bill. So total 750 hours you are getting. But let's say example, you have created two machines then. These 750 hours is going to divide by two. So for each machine for the one month, you will get 375 hours. If you have created 10 machines, then 75 hours per machine. So if you are going to exceed 750 hours, you will get a bill for that. And just for one, for your practice purpose, 750 hours are not going to come. Because what you are going to do once you complete your practice, you are going to delete those virtual machines. So for two, three hours in a one day, you can practice it. So you are safe for those things. So we have selected a size B1S. Scroll down. Now here I'm getting authentication type. Two options we have SSH, password. Right now, we are going with password. With SSH, we are also going to learn in our upcoming sessions. Now, username. Can I use any word here for username? No. There are few words they have reserved. I can't use those words as a username. Which word? Like we have a one word called root. I can't use that. Uh, there is one more admin. I can't use that. So there are some five or six words they have reserved. We can't those as a username. But these are two admin and root. We can't use it. But whatever the username you are giving it, minimum one to maximum 64 characters long. 
and username must only contains letters numbers hyphens underscores may not start with hyphen or number so i'll give a username as azure user azure user this is my username yeah yes we have given the username now next thing next thing is we have to give the password so scroll down now do we have to follow some rules for the password yes we have some rules for the password your password have to follow three of the following things one lower one upper one number or one special correct out of these four of the following things three they have to follow and your password minimum it needs to be 12 characters and maximum 123 characters lock so i'm giving the password as azure password at the rate one two three So we are able to give our password. Next thing is just creation of our this machine is our task is going to complete. No, after creation of this machine, we have to connect to this machine. And to connect to this particular machine, it is mandatory to enable one port number. Which port number? That particular port number is called as SSH and the port number is 22. That particular port number is mandatory to enable for Linux. It is mandatory. If you are not going to enable this port number, we can't connect to this machine. So scroll down. You can see here by default they have enabled that port number and how they know that they have to enable this port number by default because of the image which we have selected the image which i have selected based on that particular image they have by default enabled that particular port so let's just a quick recap we have selected resource group we have given the name, we have selected the region, we have selected the image, we have selected the size, we have given username and password, and then we have enabled the port number. But there is one more thing is one thing is pending is hard disk. Disk is pending. So for disk, we have to go to the next tab. So click on next. So by default, how much hard disk size they are giving for Linux is 30 GB. We are getting by default. But for Linux, they are giving max minimum for free tier is 64 GB. Till 64 GB, it's free tier for Linux. More than 64 GB, if you are going to select, you will get a bill. So maximum of 64 GB, you can select for Linux virtual machine not more than 64 GB. By default, they are giving 30, but big minimum requirement is 30. That's why they are giving by default 30. But maximum free you have it is 64. But if you want to select more than that, you can select that. But for that one, you will get up. Now, so here we are getting disk. And here we have some more tab networking management. It's not a part of our DevOps training. So I'm directly going to click on review plus create. Validation. Now. So whatever the details we have given it, they have verified. Now click on. Now this will take two to three minutes to create our Linux virtual 
machine. So till the time they are creating Linux virtual machine, we are not going to waste our time. We'll discuss more things. After creation of this machine, we have to connect to our machine also. Yes, we have to connect to our machine. To connect to our machine, Linux machine, I need one terminal. There are a lot of terminals. We have it in market, but the terminal which I'm going to use right now, that terminal is called as Git. This terminal I'm going to use. There are a lot of terminal. One terminal which is called as Putty we have, which is number one in the market. Then we have a Git which is number two in the market. So I'm going to show you the Git right now. How to connect our Linux machine with the help of Git. So how we can download the Git? Search on Google download Git. Here I'm getting the website. As per your operating system, it's Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever you are using, click on that. I'm using Windows. So as per your system requirement, it's 34 bit or 64 bit. Click here. And save. Done. Once you download this exe file. Here they are downloading still in process. Done. You have to double click. I'm not going to double click because in my system, it is already installed. If I start installing again, what happens is first they are going to uninstall and then they are going to install. And that will take near about five minutes. So what you have to do it is just double click on it and just click on one or two time next. And then system will install Git in your machine in two to three minutes. In my system, it will take time because it is already there. So first, if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to install this one, they are going to uninstall the previous one, previous version, because I don't have a latest version. I have a little older version, but we don't need to worry about the version right now because process is same. So they are going to uninstall in my machine and then they are going to install. So for that will take time. But if you don't have in your machine, Definitely, they don't need to un uninstall anything. They directly install it. It's very simple to install. Like you are installing a Google Chrome, you have installed it. Same way you can install Git also. What? How to just get it? Search on Google, download Git. The first website which you are getting, go there. Go for Windows. And as per your system requirement, download. So once you are installed, then what we have to do, we have to note down the public IP of our virtual machine. So here is the public IP. Done. We are able to note down the public IP of our virtual machine. Next. With the help of this particular command, I can connect to this machine. So in this one, we have to do some changes. We have to give the username. This is my username. At the rate, public ID. This is my public ID. Done. Now this command I have to run in the Git. How can I open Git? Click anywhere in your machine. I can go to desktop, right click. Here I'm getting it. So once you install Git in your machine, you have to just right click. Wherever you right click, you will see this Git bash here in Windows machine. Or if you're using Win Windows 11, in Windows 11, it is not showing. In Windows 10 or older than Windows 10 version, it is showing here. In Windows 11, in right click, it is not showing. So how you will get in Windows 11? You have to directly search here, get. Like this, you will get it. 
in Windows 11. In Windows 11, in right click, it will not show you like this. So we have opened the Git bash. Copy. Paste. End. I press yes. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Asking for password. What is my password? You can see here, I'm able to connect to my Linux virtual machine with the help of Git. So this is how we can connect to our Linux virtual machine with the help of Git. And right now I have shown you with password. In tomorrow's session, I'm going to show you with the help of SSH key ports. Now, any question anyone have regarding this process, please let me know. Anyone have any question, please raise your hand. Yes, Nehal. I've been installing the Git on uh, Windows and uh, accessing the Linux virtual machine. So, sorry, your voice is very low. Can you please increase your little volume, Nehal? Yes. Hello. Yes, Nehal. Now it's it's clear. Uh, as we installing the Git on uh, Windows machine mm -hmm. and uh, accessing the virtual machine, uh, means Linux virtual machine. So there is no need to means uh, install on Linux only. Git. No, which operating system you are using it? Um, uh, Windows. So you have to install on Windows. You are able okay. to connect to Linux machine and you can do anything on this Linux virtual machine now. On Linux virtual machine, you don't need to install Git. Okay. Because from those yes, it's not machine, mandatory not to, to have anywhere. Linux only. It's not mandatory to have Linux only. No, you yes. can use you it's up to you whatever the operating system you are using snail where you can use that operating system okay and that operating system you can install git okay and then you can connect okay. to that linux virtual machine okay and uh, while creating the uh, virtual machine uh, resource so that time there is a jrs uh, lrs options so which options need to select for that Whatever you're getting by default, just go over as it is by default. Okay. Whatever the options which I have told you, you have to just select for those options for now. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Surya can unmute you and ask your question. You are on mute. Surya, you are still on mute. Hi, Anjit. Hi. So, in this course, uh, you mentioned about uh, Azure interview questions also, right? Yes, those you will get at the end of the training. Yeah, yeah. So, Azure DevOps uh, interview question. Right, right. So I'm I'm like I have a good experience, like you know, like around twelve plus. So uh, hope like this course will help me to attend the interviews. Correct. Definitely, yeah. That's why I'm sharing the interview questions, sorry, at the end of the training. Right, right. And in the course content, uh, I see three, uh, like you know, three uh, kind of topics like uh, repos. Uh, the other one is... Uh, Azure repos. Yes, Azure repos. The other one is boards uh, and the pipelines, Pipeline. correct? Yes. So 
in the entire course content those three looks major right i mean when it comes to only those agile devops are azure services correct azure correct devops services correct so those three like whatever content you mentioned that you are going to teach uh, will that be sufficient to start building pipelines yes uh, yeah. okay those are that's the only way to build the pipeline which i'm going to teach. there are two ways to build pipeline one is classic one is by using yaml script i'm going to show you both the ways okay so there are only two yeah ways they have okay so those those three contents are important right like for other azure things devops are also important but those are specific for azure devops service we have okay 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 Thank you. and also you are uh, going to teach the terraform ansible and kubernetes yes that's what it is mentioned in the course content sure whatever okay. is mentioned in the course content all the things are going to teach sure nothing okay less nothing extra whatever yeah, yeah. is mentioned i mean my, in the course my content it is it is going to teach no no my specific question is like will that help us to crack uh, interviews like that's the question yes okay but terraform i'm teaching only basic in this training terraform terraform i'm not teaching in depth because terraform is a separate course also we have which is only 20 days of course so if you no. start it will it will add 20 days more so it's a separate course so basics i'm only going to teach in this training to the for terraform but okay. kubernetes but other uh, things are not basic other things are not yeah. basic other things are at medium level you you will okay. you will get you can clear the interview with that for that so, but terraform okay. is only basics okay yeah. okay thank you okay look like no one has any more question now we are able to connect to our linux virtual machine now what we have to do after our practice once we complete our practice what we have to do it is we have to destroy these resources one thing is i can destroy all the resources whichever we are creating you can see when i am creating a virtual machine they are creating some more resources they are creating this their network interface virtual network nsg public ip virtual machine i can go one by one and delete it but that's a time consuming task if i delete one by one the shortcut way is once you complete your practice delete this resource group if you delete this resource group under the resource group whatever the resources you have they will delete all the resource group so click on delete resource group copy the name of your resource group and paste here click on delete click on delete and whenever we are creating virtual machine system is automatically creating one more resource group here the name is network watcher rg make sure you are going to delete this resource group also and one important point till that time you are not getting a proper notification deleted don't close your browser because if you by mistake close your browser till that time you are not getting a deleted notification or you might be shut down your laptop or close your browser your resources are going to stop there. means it's not going to turn off your deletion process is going to stop there it means your resources are active so till that time you don't have a proper notification deleted don't close your browser once you get it then you can close it but before that you have to wait and make sure once you complete your practice delete your resources because next time when you try and create you have to follow same process and multiple time if you are doing practice it will be easy for you to remember the step so make sure once you complete your practice always delete those things so this is what we have for the today's session in tomorrow's session we are going to learn about how to create a linux machine with help of ssh key and then we are going to start learning about few of the basic linux anyone have any question please let me know or i'm going to 
end this session here. Yes, Suman. So we don't need to stop the uh, virtual machine and then delete the resource group? Uh... No. Directly, as you can see here, I didn't stop the machine. I'm directly deleting the resource group. Yeah. And in each resource group, uh, when we do it, like not only the Linux, so we can create a Windows uh, virtual machines and then we can delete all at the same time. Yes. Is that possible? In one single resource group, you can store unlimited virtual machines. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for joining today's session. See you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Thank you.